Hello everyone. <laughs> Another sip of the delicious coffee. How are folks doing today? Now, that's a big question. Perhaps I should rewind a little bit and say welcome. Welcome to our Wednesday afternoon live stream pop-up art studio slash virtual art hive thing that we do, that we've been doing for, well, a long time now, since the beginning of the pandemic. It's so great to be here. I'm glad that we have this platform, this technology where we can still connect and create with one another. I'm happy to be here. I'm hoping you're happy to be here too. Hello, Shelly. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, some of you who are familiar with what we do here might already know this. So, you know, take a little bit of a break or pour yourself a cup of coffee if you need to. But today, what we're doing here is just creating, connecting, chatting, if you feel up to it. If not, you can simply listen or watch and enjoy the energy. Even if you're not participating in that live stream chat, please know that you're still a part of this community. And you know what? you're still contributing to the creative energy that makes this thing as fabulous as it is. And hello, Nicole. Now, as folks are coming in and settling down, gathering their supplies, I just wanna remind you that this is, I guess, a, an accountable space, a safe space where we can all connect and create. But part of what makes that, um, that space safe and accountable is being supportive and encouraging of one another, including to ourselves, which can sometimes be the hardest thing. I invite you to be kind and gentle with yourself today. And just to remember that you're worth it. Give yourself some permission to play, to take a break, to take a breather, to make some art. Um, perhaps you just wanna listen while you're doing laundry or something like that. And if you're doing that, if you have other things that you need to do while you listen or watch, that's okay too. Don't have to beat yourself up because you can't make art with me today. That's totally fine. Do what feels right for you so that you can have your best day. And of course, if things come up in the chat or in my, my ramblings that perhaps, you know, maybe they press buttons, activate you in certain ways, maybe just, you know, make you feel not good in any way, please feel free to let me know. And I do mean this. Send me a message or send me an email at info at livingroomcommunityartstudio.org. And why do I want you to let me know when things don't work well for you? because I enjoy learning and growing as a human being and being in community helps me human more effectively. And that's part of being an artist. It's part of why I'm here, that I want to become a better version of myself, even though sometimes that's hard. Hey, Austin, nice to see you too. And Joe as well, and Wendy, oh my goodness. We're all here, this is awesome. It's going to be a lovely, lovely day. Yeah, but please do reach out and let me know. And if there's things going on in the chat, you know what, we can talk about it, we can work it out. And that includes the chat that's going on inside too. So if you have an inner critic like I do, and that inner critic is being really loud and obnoxious and not letting you do the things you want to do in the way you want to do them, let us know about it. We have a fantastic community here and we can be a resource to one another. And maybe we can find a way to listen to that inner critic or acknowledge what it's saying, if, if it's constructive. If it's not constructive, then you know what? We can work together to kind of kick it out of the space for a little bit so you have that time to relax. And it's lovely. Wow, so we're having some folks who are watching who are watching away, from away. That's lovely. Thank you for tuning in, even though you're not where you normally are. And you know what? Shelly's saying, missed a few weeks. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to have you back, Shelly. That's great. And I know that folks can't come every week. And I know that folks may not be able to stay every time we're on. This is an hour and a half of making and chatting. And maybe you don't have time to stay for all of that. And that's okay. All right. You can come and go. You can use this time the way you need to use it for what you need to do. But I'm glad folks are out there and I'm hoping, even though here right now the skies are a little gray, I'm hoping that folks have been able to enjoy and appreciate the lovely warm weather we've been having lately here in Durham region. It has been such a change from the last few weeks. <laughs> And I'm surprised, quite frankly, that I don't have a sunburn yet. So if you want to make art for a little while, that's great. But if you want to go outside, absorb some of that sunlight and that warm air, you could, that's totally fine by me. And as I said last week, don't be surprised if you look up and maybe I'm climbing out the window because we got to appreciate this while it's here, don't we? So folks, as always, I want to know what you're working on today. If you've got an exciting project on the go, maybe there's something that you finished 
that has been a project in the past, I'd like to know what it is too. I'd like to see what you're working on. If it's a link to something, that's even better. Well, not even better, but you can show photos in our show and tell after this post. We usually post a kind of like a picture that kind of wraps everything up where people can share what they've been working on if they like, but also links because I know not everyone does visual art. Some folks do other kinds of art, right? If you have some music that you've made or a podcast that you've created, or perhaps you have, I don't know, a Tumblr, a writing site, you know what? Share it. Why not? Shine a light on what you do. Celebrate who you are and the way you tell stories because that's after all, what art is, it's storytelling, isn't it? Oh, and speaking of sunburns, Shelly got your first sunburn, but the weather was so beautiful. I know, it's hard. I think sometimes, oh, I'm just going to be out for a few minutes. Not very long. And then, of course, cut to lobster face an hour later. I know, I've got to remember to do that sunblock, put on that sunblock. But, uh, yeah, it is really nice to be outside again, isn't it? And Joe saying that you found a beautiful trail to walk on the edge of Oshawa. It follows Farewell Creek. I'm not sure I'm familiar with Farewell Creek, but to tell you the truth, Joe, I don't know the names of the creeks in Oshawa. I just know that we have the most beautiful watershed and I'm so appreciative that it's here. So Joe says there is a wooded trail and a paved trail. Barb did, wa uh, did outwalk you. Well, fair enough, but it was a beautiful outside space to possibly paint or draw on. It's called Thule Mill Park on Highway Number 2 in Curtis slash Oshawa. So folks, that is a top tip if you have the ability to get out there a little bit, or maybe you already live in the Curtis Oshawa area. If you haven't been to Thule Mill Park, it certainly sounds like a great time to go. I love that. Yeah, I've, I've been sticking to the parks. Uh, <laughs> I was going to start singing a song there. Um, the parks that are just near me in my neighborhood and even though I've seen them and been to them a hundred times, over a hundred times, I find something new and beautiful in them every single time I go. I appreciate it so, 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 so much. Oh, here. Wow, I've got a messy workspace today. I've got to tidy up some things so that I can put my coffee down without it falling over. But maybe, folks, maybe that can be part of today. Maybe today is about sharing the spaces, the outdoor spaces you like to go or the spaces you like to create in that aren't necessarily in your home, where, you know, we're in a period where we can enjoy getting out there, getting some fresh air. And yeah, like Joe lots says, lots of dog walking out there. Maybe you have a dog that you want to walk or you need to walk. Where are the spaces that you like to go to create your outdoor nature spaces? And when I talk about creating, of course, I'm not just talking about you know, the products that we make, but this can include, creation includes the way that we think about things too, doesn't it? It includes the time we give to ourselves to explore, to appreciate, to envision. So that totally counts. So maybe you're not making art, but maybe you're, yeah, maybe it's just about, hmm, I want some of this, but I don't want the whole page. I'll trim it down. Maybe it includes uh, daydreaming, right? I am definitely in a time right now where I'm feeling the need to do some daydreaming. When things get busy or when I haven't had a break in a long time, you know, not just a like a weekend break because sometimes weekend breaks, you know, you can, you can take a little time off. But I'm talking about Maybe I'm talking about a holiday here. Maybe I'm talking about some kind of extended break where there's permission not to think about anything if you don't have to or don't want to, where you have no responsibilities to tend to. You can turn off all the devices and in turning off all those devices liberate space in your brain to think of other things. Let's see. And we do have a holiday weekend coming up, at least here in Ontario. And I don't know what folks are doing for their holiday weekends. I'm imagining there will be some outside time if weather permits, but it's a perfect opportunity 
if you can, if you're lucky enough to be able to, to allow your brain to do some wandering. Downtime is so, so important for artists, for creatives, for anyone who wants to imagine something differently, problem solve in some way. And what am I making today? Well, I think what I'm going to be making today, folks, is ugly art. Ugly art. I've been thinking about that a lot lately and making space and permission in our lives to create things that aren't necessarily beautiful or pretty or purposeful, to let things out in a way that feels constructive um, and safe. And it's made me wonder and think about what, in fact, ugly is. So that's something I might be visiting today and talking with you about. What does ugly mean? What is ugly? And what is ugly art? And Nicole's saying, oh, interesting. So we're talking about creativity here and just you know, giving that space to your brain to imagine things in new and exciting ways. And oftentimes, yeah, we see it in advertising, don't we? Nicole's saying, I saw a really creative way of advertising a pair of headphones. As a person who wears glasses, Nicole finds it hard to find ones that don't, whoa, really, that don't warp your glasses. The advertisers went out of their way to show how they can be worn with glasses. It was interesting to see a company find a different niche market. And that's, yeah, that's about creativity. It's also about anticipating people's needs, isn't it? And identifying, identifying folks who might be feeling left out or, you know, I'm sure in their minds they see it as, you know, identifying markets that have yet to be tapped. But if we look at it on the bright side and not necessarily the negative side, um, I think it is about imagining people complexly and saying, how can we help make people's lives better with these things that we have to offer them? And if you can find a way of connecting and letting people know that they've been seen and heard and acknowledged in some way, and sometimes in ways that might seem trivial to other people, but to us, for you, I mean, I had no idea because I don't wear glasses, but yeah, wearing headphones, I imagine, would kind of put a strange pressure on them that over time would warp them, something you don't think about every day. And when there are people out there who do think about those things, it does make a difference, doesn't it? It's a really lovely thing. Yeah, that makes me happy too. Hmm. So working in black and white on this page so far, if you're noticing your, the camera doing a little searching to focus, that is why when we're just working with black, white, black and white lines, sometimes it gets a little warped. So ugly art, what is ugly? And why am I thinking about it? Um, I don't know. It started with, well, uh, Oh, look, Joe's, uh, Joe's got to go. Will you have a wonderful day too, Joe? Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your long weekend. And Joe's wishing the same to everyone out there. That's lovely. Um, we had fantastic, some, we've been having some fantastic conversations in the Art Hive groups that happen on Tuesday mornings. We create, we hang out, we wake up together. And... We just chat about different things. How our day's been so far, how our week's been so far, what we're working on, what we're learning about the materials that we're working with. And one of our guests this week was talking about scribbling and just doodling slash scribbling as a way of sparking creativity, but also giving permission to yourself to not be perfect to just let things out. And it's been a long time since I've doodled or scribbled like this without purpose, without it having to be something. So I thought I'd give it a go. And we'll see what emerges. We'll see what shows up, but I want to build on it and I want to explore what happens when I intentionally try to make some ugly art, which might be tough. Has anyone else out there ever tried, really tried to make some ugly art before? If so, I would love to know what it was like for you. 
Because I think us humans have a really hard time with that idea. And I think we have a really hard time with letting something be ugly. Letting something look uh, imperfect. Letting something be less than what our fabulous minds want it to be. And again, it brings it back to the question of what is ugly, right? Each one of us has a different idea of what that means. I don't think ugly means imperfect because all art that is handmade will have some kind of imperfections about it, won't it? Ooh. And those things can be beautiful sometimes. I wonder if it has something to do with embracing imbalance or embracing things that unsettle us. Now, Olivia is saying, ah, oh, interesting. You know, Olivia, I like that. Olivia says, it would be really interesting to make multiple pages all that size and connect them into an ugly collage piece. I would love that. I want to know why you think that would be amazing, though. Okay, camera, focus. My camera, stop struggling, will ya? It's like a heartbeat on the screen. It's just going, you're right, Austin, you called it. The focus is fading in and out like it's pulsating. It is like a heartbeat, isn't it? So what am I going to do to help this focus here? Come on, what happens if I do that? Let's see, we're going to experiment here. It doesn't seem to be focusing on my hand either. Oh, there's my hand. You got a lot of my hand. But it's interesting, underneath, it's still pulsating, isn't it? All right, let's bring this down and see what happens. Slowly bring it down. And I'm gonna see if I can put something on this page that it can focus on. I might just really not like this black and white. Let's see. It's like uh, figuring out, oh, come on. <laughs> and Olivia says maybe creating an imperfect piece. Imperfect piecing together all the pieces will create a kind of perfect harmony. And that's an interesting point of view now. Come on. Come on, camera. Oh, it was working there. Because when we talk about unsettling things that just don't feel right, oftentimes it has to do with things like that. Kind of like basic things that tie into art, which is harmony, symmetry, all those sort of art school lessons. Oh, come on, camera. But if you have enough of those things, in like together, then you do create another kind of pattern. You create another kind of harmony. So let's see what we got here. Let's see if I add some water here. Wow, it really doesn't like this black and white image. Maybe it's the camera reacting to the ugly. But even out there, I know that sometimes that can be Oh, my paintbrush broke again. I gotta glue that. I love this paintbrush so much. All right. So what is, no one, like, what is ugly? That's an interesting thing. I think when it comes to content, it can also be big difficult things that we feel. Oh, let me know folks if that 
that pulsating camera is freaking you out the same way it's freaking me out. In fact, let's see what happens here. I think sometimes ugly can be there because of the the feeling of ugly, the feeling of heavy, dark things, challenging things. Oh, wow. <laughs> this camera is working really hard to focus on all the writing in this page. Folks, I might need to switch out this to try something else, only because I'm aware that people might be watching and if I was watching, that might be a migraine trigger for me. It's like a strobe light or something. So let's start again. Oh wait, maybe black and white will be the same. Hello, Amanda. Nice to see you here. How are you doing? And I'm going to go back to my scribbles and we'll see if it's the scribbles that are annoying the camera or if it's something else. Oh, no, it's pulsating again. <laughs> and Austin thinks it, it, this is fascinating. It's a technology, it's a conversation where the technology is kind of overlapping with what we're talking about. But Austin says, I think you're right. It might not just not be able to handle the imperfections. So even the camera is trying to find its balance, trying to find its perfect and focus on the tiny things. It knows something in its computer camera brain is saying, you've got to focus on that other stuff on the page. And when it can't, it struggles. I think there's something there. Our own brains maybe aren't so different and what we try to make meaning of. Oh, it's doing it again. Oh, Amanda, Amanda says miss, Amanda says hello and missing your art family. Well, Amanda, we miss you too. Let's see if I can bring some order to this camera. And in the process, I might just create exactly This is turning into a really interesting battle. Amanda, what are you creating today? What are you working on? If you'd like to join me in what I'm creating today, just gather whatever materials you have on hand. And then with all the intention, ask yourself to create something ugly. Give yourself that assignment and see what happens. So Amanda's working on something different, schoolwork. which is a really interesting thing on the subject that we're talking about of imperfection and kind of making that ugly art because in school of course there is that pressure to well it's not conform but to create things to to a certain standard you, you're handing something in to be graded or to be approved by someone and of course that brings up its own issues all right let's see And I wonder if for a lot of us, that's when the inner critic begins to show up. In school, when we're learning, when we're trying to do something that either looks like something else or has to be like something else. When we start comparing ourselves and the work we do to the work of others. And sometimes it's important. Sometimes that's how we learn and grow. We push ourselves. 
And especially with stuff for school, of course it's not always fun, is it, Amanda? <laughs> but there's that satisfaction you receive from completing it, from knowing that you can do it. So of course, making ugly art at the living room, folks who were at the living room, you probably heard me give this assignment to quite a few people, especially if they didn't think they were artists, if they didn't think they could create, or if they didn't know what to create, or perhaps if they were worried that other people might be watching, they didn't want to look, you know, like they didn't know what they were doing. Again, that fear of judgment coming up. Oftentimes, I would invite them to make some ugly art and to really commit to it. Because making ugly art does involve choices, doesn't it? And Barb, hello, Barb. Now, Barb always has something lovely to say. Barb saying, ugly for you is about using what the world considers to be the wrong color. Being totally colorblind could be challenging. Ah, of course. I've learned that color is a personal, wonderful choice. And it absolutely is. So, but it sounds like for you, it's, it's again, one of those things that a lot of us take for granted. And that how you, how someone uses color, each one of us might be tempted to judge or might have that reaction to how someone else uses color. And we don't know the whole story. And Wendy says, <laughs> Wendy says, I think I'm good at ugly. Really? That's interesting. Why would you say that? And I know you might just be joking. But it's a really interesting concept about what is ugly art. I think sometimes for folks, I mean, is it just subjective or is there something, is there a common ground between all of us and what we think? Oh, camera, stop doing that. Because of course, one person's ugly can be another person's beautiful, I suppose. Is it a lack of, I was going to say a lack of confidence. Sometimes you can see someone making something and they're just so confident at it that it comes across as being extraordinary, <laughs> even though it may not be something that you like. And Olivia says, I think that's the hardest part about finishing art school. You're so used to listening to the opinions of teachers, peers, etc. It can be hard not to adopt those voices in your own head. And yeah, and for those voices to become your own inner critic, because you've let them in, in a way at school, you give permission to those voices to enter into your being. All right, this camera is not liking the doodlings today. And Olivia says, making ugly art is a great way to silence your inner critic. And I agree. I just want to silence this camera from doing its weird photoing things. And yes, so coloring outside the lines. Again, that idea of doing something. So this idea of ugly, excuse me for just a minute. Ugly being, whoa, where am I going? Uh, I'm still here, folks. Hello. I'm going to abandon, I really wanted to work with Sharpie today and doodle and scribble, but my camera is saying no thank you to that. So we'll see what else we can do just to let the ugly out. So there seems to also be this idea that ugly is about hmm, going against the grain. It has uh, perhaps not going against other concepts of what beauty might be or what the ideal could be. I think things that we don't understand, that we're unused to, can sometimes feel uncomfortable. And sometimes, is that what it means? Does discomfort translate into ugly for us if we're not comfortable with something? That's an interesting thing to think about because I think a lot of us can relate to that in one way or another.
just not knowing. Not being familiar with something. And I think it's a, what is that though? It's a point of growth perhaps? When we can recognize that just because we're not familiar with something doesn't mean being unfamiliar with something doesn't mean that it's not beautiful. Am I saying that right? Do you know what I mean? We like to push away the things that are uncomfortable, the things we don't understand, the things that are very new to us. But we also might miss out. So how do we become comfortable with those things? All right, here we go. Just having fun now, folks. And please, camera, don't you dare start doing that thing again. Not talking to you, community. I'm talking to the camera. I want to see what ugly can be here. The unexpected, the unfamiliar. For me, a lot of the times, it's that fear of doing too much, which I think could be an old art school, theater school thing. And Nicole's saying one thing that could be challenging is the amount of exposure we have to other artists. This gives us so many people to compare our work to that we never feel quite good enough. That is interesting. Yeah, I think if you ask anyone who has a difficult time with their own work, I think at the root of it might be that that idea because we really love and appreciate and sometimes adore the work of someone else. And they've had such an imprint on us that we measure our own work by their standards, by their creative process, by their creative product. Ah, Nicole says, this looks like coral? Awesome. We'll see. I'm just trying to make some ugly art. Let's see what it looks like in the end and we'll all figure it out together. And if you are using a straw to make art today, just be sure not to hyperventilate when you get really into it. Whew, a little bit lightheaded there. But I think that, that self-comparison piece is huge. And I think all artists suffer from it, creatives. I think whatever field you're in, you might suffer from it. You, you look to someone else you admire and you can't help but measure yourself by them. But is it possible is it ever possible to have perspective on what you are doing? There's a question for the community. Is it ever possible to really see yourself the way other people see, see you? Because of course that is another thing, another conversation that we used to have at the studio all the time. Someone else is doing something that we look at and we adore what they're doing and then you ask them, or you let them know that you like it. And of course, the first thing they might say is, it's a self-criticism. You learn that they in fact hate it. Olivia saying, one of my drawing teachers gave us an assignment where we had to draw all of the negative space around objects as a way of giving a platform to mundane, ordinary things instead of what's assumed to be the important subject similar to highlighting the importance of ugly art. Oh, I love that. That's a fantastic assignment. I hope I'm not ducking out of frame too much to do this. And Barb says, your picture reminds me of when you pull strings across the page. Ah, yes, string painting. I haven't done that in a long, long, long time. We went through a bit of a, a, a phase at the studio I think it was Terence, perhaps, a community artist who was working on that. And everyone wanted to play with string and paint and ink after that. But yeah, I think 
similar to what Olivia was saying, highlighting, looking at the ordinary, the, uh, the mundane, the, the things that don't shine in a picture, or like, just looking around the, our space where we might be right now, you can probably see a whole bunch of things that would, you, I can capture that, I can take a photo of that, I can draw that, I can paint that, I can make art with that. But looking around that to appreciate those smaller, subtler things, the more ordinary things, that's a really great way to kind of flip that switch in your brain to challenge yourself into seeing things in a new way and appreciating things in a new way. And yeah, perhaps, I mean, ugly art? I don't know if it's, yeah, I think there, there are parallels there, but it's about breaking away from the expected, isn't it? Hello, Joanna. And Joanna says, what an interesting conversation. Ah, I want to try Olivia's teacher's activity. I think I do too. I do too, Joanna. And Nicole says, just finished making a very tiny jellyfish yesterday. The problem was I kept on losing it. So this makes me wonder if this jellyfish was very, very tiny. And of course, is it crocheted? Is that what we're thinking? A crocheted jellyfish that you kept losing? The interesting thing about ugly art or flipping, you know, the idea of how we highlight what we see or what we want the viewer to see, it is, it is something about control, isn't it? Now I might be going down another whole other rabbit hole over here. But both these things have to do with control and or relinquishing control, don't they? And one aspect, how we relinquish control ourselves in the work that we're creating, and as a creator, how we highlight or direct our audience's gaze in what we're creating. In the case of Olivia's, that excellent, excellent activity that Olivia was mentioning. Does it feel strange to highlight those things? That's a question, Olivia, when you were creating that piece, did you have to resist the temptation of, you know, being pulled back into the other subject matter? Or was it something, was focusing on the negative space something that was easy for you? Because I wonder if a lot of creators out there might struggle with that, you know, flipping back and forth. And hello, Ashley, lovely to see you here. <laughs> Ashley says, the more I blow this out, the more Ashley sees the jellyfish from the Ripley Aquarium. You know what, I'll have to trust you there. I haven't been to the Ripley's Aquarium. But I think what I'm interested in doing here is really challenging this paper. <laughs> Again, revisiting all those kind of art school rules that some of us might be taught, the things you should do that you shouldn't do, what makes a good work of art what makes a not good work of art. There's all these things that we're taught. And I think a lot of them also come from the things that make sense to us as human beings. The things, again, that feel right, or when we look at them, they seem right. But what happens if we commit to doing the opposite? And this, again, with Olivia's thing, to focusing on the opposite. Maybe on the opposite thing that we want to do in that moment. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I can remember several pieces that I've been working on, and this is, you know, about all arts across the board. Ah, interesting. Olivia says, and I'll come back to what I was saying too. Olivia says, yes, it was difficult to switch my brain in that way. And she challenged us to draw the negative space without thinking of actually drawing the outline of the object, if that makes sense. So you are seeing the space for what it is separate from the objects that are in it. So it reminds me of one of those, the kind of brain games that you play when you're looking at, you know, the ink blots of the two faces or the vase in between the two faces. If you're creating the vase in between the two faces, then you're not thinking about the two faces and vice versa. If you're doing the faces, then you're not thinking about the vase you're creating. Um, I understand that. I think I understand that, but it's, I suppose it's asking our brains to let go of identifying the things that we're seeing. In the case of that activity as well, 
I wonder if it is about seeing things just as shapes with, you know, the way light hits them, shapes, forms, lines, textures, colors, and you forget, you're retraining your brain so that you're not seeing cup and saucer, vase of flowers. What happens if we just let go of all of those things and ask ourselves to see them as just, yeah, basic forms in space? It's a really interesting activity. Olivia, I think that would be a really cool skill share one of these days. So I might be in contact about that. I know every week I'm luring people in and saying, I want to work with you. I want to work with you. I want to work with you. And folks, please believe me, I am telling the truth when I say that, but it might take me some time to organize it. But I think from this conversation, there's a few interesting skill shares that we could get on top of. And what was I saying? I think I've forgotten it now. <laughs> of course I did, because I thought I would remember it. Something about, okay, talking about control and managing and things and managing things, letting go. I think it all had to do with that idea of letting go. Ah, it'll come back to me. And Nicole says, I remember drawing a picture of my friend's foot for a project in high school. I like where this is going. I thought it was ugly, but she still has it since she loved it. And that is another really, really awesome thing. I think the intention that goes into pieces is beautiful and can be extraordinarily beautiful. And sometimes that is exactly why we love a piece of art. Sometimes that is why we respond to a piece of art, isn't it? Yeah, I really love when people create uh, portraits and this could be another fantastic Skillshare doing uh, some contour drawing self-portraits. Maybe we could do this in a work in a Zoom workshop where without looking, you know, without looking at your paper and without lifting your pen from the page or your whatever drawing implement you have, you just focus on that which you are looking at, which in this case might be a person and giving shape to that person through that line on the page, but you're not double, you're not censoring yourself as you go. You're freeing yourself up from that. Right? <laughs> You're freeing yourself up from that self-censoring um, that can be so paralyzing in what we do when we're creating it. It's one of the reasons why I actually love making art with you folks on Wednesdays because I'm chatting with you and because part of my brain is distracted from the thing I'm creating that I'm not, I'm not fussing over it too much, right? I'm not trying to do something you know, that I've given myself permission to let it be whatever it is. And it's funny to be talking about intentionally making ugly art today because I know I've made ugly things on here before. Or at least my inner critic has told me that. But to intentionally work on that or have that as a theme in my mind as I'm creating It'll be really interesting to see what happens. And now I remember what I was going to say. I was thinking of working on different projects in my life, different arts, creative endeavors. So this could be theater, it could be making visual art. Oh yes, mucky colors. And uh, thinking about when things get tough, when things feel hard, when things begin to feel sticky. I don't know, folks, let me know if you can relate to that feeling. Because I'd love to know how you've dealt with these experiences too. Almost when things become too, or I become too focused on trying to achieve something. And sometimes, oftentimes, it means that it also becomes a lot less fun to do. Because it's so good. Haha, <laughs> a little bit of paint on the desk there, but that's okay. I can clean it up. So, in those moments, one of the things that I find quite liberating, and it came about through mis not, it was like a, just purely a mistake that I discovered this and stumbled across this, as I'm sure many 
you have as well, that by falling on my face, by making a mistake, sometimes by m intentionally doing something that feels wrong, that's what opens up the door to discovery. That's what opens up the thing that actually helps direct me in the place I need to be or helps me discover a new way of doing something that I wouldn't have otherwise discovered. And it comes from actually with confidence and intention saying, yeah, I'll try that, even though I hate that. I think it's going to suck, but I'm going to try it anyways. Let me know if anyone else out there has had a similar experience, because over time I've actually adapted that now as one of the tools I use in my art making, but also to get through difficult times in life, quite frankly, to think about, well, what is the thing that feels like the thing that I'm avoiding or the thing that I'm afraid of? And just being able to ask myself, like, what would it, what does that look like? What does that mean if that thing becomes a reality? You don't always want to act on those choices in life, but to be able to be aware of them kind of gives you a perspective that's difficult to see when you're only focusing on one path, on one idea, on one way of being. Hmm. And because sometimes that ugly, that bad, that bad thing, that weird mistake is absolutely beautiful. And I think absolutely human, again, that imperfection, right? So right now, for example, I feel like filling in each one of these little bubbly jellyfish that I've got going on with circles, because I feel like that's, I feel called to echo shapes, those circular shapes. So what would I do? What's the opposite of that? What if I said no to that right now? And I say, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do, well, the opposite of circles for me is squares. So let's try that. It feels weird to shove in some square shapes and to sh like some sharp corners into this piece, which seems very organic and flowy. But what happens if I do that? I'm going to try it. I'm going to take some of my water pastel crayons here, and this is still wet. So, oh, we might have some interesting things happening. And if you're joining us, folks, we're having a really interesting day. <laughs> and when I say me, I think me, I don't know. I hope other folks out there are having an interesting day, but we've been talking about uh, the battles between wanting to create beautiful, good things and the benefits that can come from embracing the ugly and letting things happen on their own, even if they don't feel right, even if it doesn't feel like the thing that needs to happen in the end. What if we make space for that imperfect stuff? So walking into that, the thing that doesn't feel right, because it was flowy, it was jellyfishy, it was all of that. And Olivia says, you could use squares to highlight different points of ugly interest in the piece. <laughs> like little tiny frames, like, and if you look over to the far left corner of the piece, you'll be able to see this kind of ugly. Well, that gives me an idea though. Now that I have these basic squares laid out, maybe what I'll do, Olivia, thank you for that idea, is maybe I will actually fill in these squares with a little more about my ugly. So if I take this, if I turn a little corner, maybe this is about making space for some of the ugliness I feel inside of me, about me. Strange thing, but maybe, yeah, it'll be like a little mini museum of ugly, Mary's ugly. And how do you do that? I don't know. I feel like part of the way you do that is just by letting colors represent the ugly. And this has been an important part of this week is like making space for these little bits and pieces within myself that I'm not fond of. The things that I struggle with from time to time. And I haven't asked Nicole today. I can't believe I haven't even asked this, but what day is it? I mean, I know it's Wednesday, but I think there's also a national day of something going on out there.
And Nicole is usually the one to give us a heads up by looking at that calendar and letting us know. So there's that square. Let's see. I'm going to give some homes to my ugly. And you know what? I'm sure there is a museum of ugly stuff out there. There's got to be, right? Ah, interesting. So Ashley says that made it look really cool. So this is like putting the squares on it, being able to fill in these areas and do interesting things. Yeah, right? I wanted to go with circles. That's the place I normally go because that's what feels right to me. And circles within circles, of course, there's that pattern, that flow. But sometimes pushing myself out of that space, you never quite know where it'll take you. And Nicole says, so Nicole, first have to go look, but it, it for folks, if you're interested, oh, this is a good day. It's National Devil's Food Cake Day. That is a day worth celebrating. I think this weekend should actually be the long weekend of uh, Devil's Food Cake Day. So for folks who might be watching, and whether you're watching now or once it's been archived, uh, we're heading into what Canadians like to call, or Ontarians like to call, May 2-4 weekend. Like 2-4 or 20, I don't know. I don't know where that comes from. It's a very, it feels like a very Canadian thing, that. But I think it should be Devil's Cake Weekend, so I'm going to rechristen it. And Olivia says, something that I like to do with abstract or ugly art is to cut it up and rearrange it into a collage. Absolutely! And it's, again, that way of taking things that feel perhaps uncomfortable or wrong or that they didn't work out. And let's remember, too, that sometimes things aren't wrong. Sometimes they're absolutely right when they look <laughs> uncomfortable or some or disgusting even sometimes that's exactly what we need to create we need to let that ugly out we need to let the art hold the hard stuff or the difficult stuff or the ugly stuff right that is a really important thing that art of any kind of any kind of expressive modality can do let me head into this and so which box is this let me just figure this one out for myself yes no, you know what? Maybe this will combine it. So each one of these boxes is a different part of myself that I'm not quite fond of. The ugly parts of Mary. But Olivia, you're right. So those things, those things that we make, the things that sometimes represent the difficult or ugly, disturbing, you know, the difficult stuff. It may not look nice. It may not look pretty. We may not want to have it around us, even if it looks beautiful. So being able to reshape it, transform it into something else, into a collage that just somehow makes everything make sense, that fits all the pieces together in a way that helps us feel uplifted or purposeful, right? That makes sense of all those difficult things. That can be really, that can be a fantastic creative moment to understand that all your pieces, even the difficult, dark, edgy, uncomfortable, ugly bits and pieces. They are important pieces of where we're at in our lives right now, sometimes who we are, the journey we're on. It's not about discarding them so much as acknowledging them and figuring out how, how can we integrate these pieces into our lives? How can we build a relationship with them that will help us feel safe, secure, thrive, whatever those things might be, move forward, or just even be okay with where we're at right now. Oh, and God, Austin wants to remind us too, so today's Devil's, Devil's Cake Day, Devil's Food Cake Day, but Austin wants to remind everyone that Goth Day is on the 22nd. So what day is the 22nd? Is that, do, 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 is that Sunday? If you are a goth out there, happy, happy Goth Day. And I know there will be some folks here in Oshawa just embracing and loving their goth selves, embracing that culture, and figuring out how they can share that culture with other. I look forward to what Austin's gonna do on that day, absolutely. And Ashley says, oh, excellent to have research being done on the other side. Ashley says, yes, there is a museum in Wisconsin called, uh, it's called a house on a rock 
and has the weirdest strange things in the world. Most of it is strange and ugly and sometimes scary. That's awesome. So what's the, do you know what the name of that house is? It, is that, is it Wisconsin Caused House or is that a typo? Sometimes when I'm writing in the chat, I get ahead of myself, especially when I get excited. So, um, that's wild. Yeah. We need to honor the weird and the ugly in ourselves, don't we? Because when we do that for ourselves, we can make space for it in the world around us. And I suppose that's one of the things that's been on my mind a lot as well. Because sometimes we make this life look easy. And I think sometimes on things like this, on live streams or Instagram or whatever have you, uh, we don't always show the suffering. We don't always show the difficult parts of our lives. But it's important, I think, that people know they're there because it's just very human. And Ashley, oh, any day with cake is good. Joanna says, any day with this cake, cake is good, so enjoy. This is, this is a good day. This is one of those days. And Ashley says, I don't see ugly though, Mary. Uh, as you color each box, they become more to life. So it brings them to life. See, this is an interesting piece of this story that you might be able to see things that I can't right now because I'm in the middle of it. But if I didn't allow this to happen, and perhaps if I didn't have you folks here to share it with, to allow it to happen with, that would never, it would never be possible because hopefully later on, I'll be able to stand back and have a look at it and see a bit of what you see. And I'll know that taking the risk was worth it. Oh, House on a Rock. So Ashley says it is House on a Rock, that museum in Wisconsin. It's called House on a Rock. Excellent. So Wisconsin, watch out. Once the travel bans are lifted and we can travel safely with one another, I think you might have a whole bunch of people visiting you. Living room field trip. <laughs> We've joked about stuff like that in the past, but more and more now, I think that maybe that's in our future. And Barb says, I think tie dye is an awesome surprise activity that seems ugly at first and then it comes out beautiful. And you're right. Tie-dye is all about trust, isn't it? Because I think even, you know, there's so many different cultures that incorporate tie-dye into what they do, but there's always a risk element involved there. You hope and think it might look one way, but you can do all the ties and the folds that you've, you know, you've learned how to do to help it be whatever it needs to be. But you never quite know. So that surprise element and just finding a way to appreciate it, I suppose. But that's a great example again. And again here, I'm just going to Let that out. Just trying to do the things that don't feel right, giving them a go, because if you can't give them a go in art, well then, where can you? It's one of the things I love about creating, that you can take these risks, you can try new things, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but you never know what you will learn. You never know. You just never know, right? Interesting. I kind of like the splatters that are behind it too, but again, that's what I like. That's what feels good. Now, part of me wants to smooth over those areas. So I'm tempted to go in with that brush and smooth over those areas. So what's the opposite of that? Sharpie time. It's highlighting them, isn't it? It's actually adding more lines in there that can't be changed. And I'm sure there are so many other ways of interpreting this. Oops. Oh, my Sharpie won't like this. Too bad, Sharpie. But 
this way again. Oh, come on, Sharpie. I promise I'll treat you better afterwards. Oh, so cruel to my materials. But this is the, the thing that doesn't feel right, so I'm going to do it and see what happens. Of course, creating with marker anything that has that permanent effect. Watercolor always has a little bit of a note for me because it allows me to flow or to soften things. But that does its own thing. All right. So now what? Because the other part of my brain says you should probably stop or you should probably. <laughs> that was my brain reacting. I wanted to fill in that space. Of course, it says don't do anything else. But then, of course, that's what I should do, shouldn't I? I should do something else. Oh, and interesting, Olivia says, I think another interesting play on negative space is to look at the page behind your work. Yes, too, because it always shows all of your excess that extended off your page. Absolutely, Olivia. So if I were to remove this, for example, you see the work, you see this, the spill off from everything. And if there are any artists out there who um, work like that, who have a backdrop page for what you do, I often love and Olivia, you might, it sounds like you might as well, using that sort of your runoff page, incorporating it or creating a work of art with it. Because you're right, you get the spill off, you get this fantastic effect. And again, it's all the unintentional stuff, the accidental stuff, the stuff you never really thought you'd do or wanted to do. And yet, oftentimes it's so, so beautiful. So let's see what happens here. My saying stop, and I'm going to keep going. All right. Yeah, something on this corner. And I know I'm bringing balance to it. Ah, but in the spirit of going above and beyond. Because how does an artist know when something is finished? How does a musician know when that song is done? Or that sculpture completed or that book is finally edited and ready to go? You don't, do you? That's what makes, <laughs> that's one of the things that makes art so interesting. It's a relationship you have with the piece and sometimes what you do is you simply choose to walk away from it. Well, I'm not walking away from this yet. All right, <sighs> but maybe now, maybe now. But what I will do I will bring a frame into it. Let's see. What else, folks? What else do you think it needs? Hmm? What else feels absolutely wrong to put into this picture right now? I do want to do that. I feel like there's something there. When I think about the ugly that's in me, That's definitely there. And I'll 
put in a circle. <laughs> I'll put in a circle to represent that part of me that wants to always have harmony, that wants to always have balance, that wants to always create something that appeals to other people, that wants to create something beautiful, that wants to be beautiful myself. Because I think when we're creating, that's also something we're doing, we're creating ourselves. And we're, it's a conversation we're having about ourselves with the art we're making. Maybe oh, not always about us, but perhaps things we've experienced, ways we see the world, how we've been impacted, sometimes without even realizing it by what's going on around us. And that circle to me represents all those times and ways I try to make myself fit. I try to make myself be what I want to be or what, what I think other people expect me to be or what I should be for other people. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's when it takes over, it's when it becomes the only thing that I gotta watch out for, right? But there's that, all right. Whew, folks, I really had a lot of fun making that. And I think I'm gonna try that more often. So let's see, Olivia says, cut out white shapes with paper and glue them on maybe. Oh, so this is what we can do, yes. Bringing back the white space. <laughs> That's a great observation, Olivia. Olivia says, bringing back white space feels wrong. So if I were to look at this and say, yeah, what would, what would feel right? Now it's come to a point where that would feel odd to bring back new spots. You know what I might do with this later? And this comes back, it sort of harkens back to something you were talking about before is, um, and is a great thing to do along that, like in that theme of destroying your art. So when you have something that, you know, sometimes you don't like and being able to cut it up and incorporate it into other collages or to other pieces, I often do that with art that I do like that I've made just because I have a lot of it lying around from different live streams and things that I've done. So repurposing that artwork, um, maybe when this dries, I will cut out parts of, and create windows into other parts. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll create peekaboo windows, turn this into a dual layered work of art so that underneath every little window of ugly, maybe there's something else underneath. Hmm. Well, maybe that's the next, maybe that's a place that makes sense to go to next. I'll create something to go underneath the ugly. And maybe that's a lovely way to wrap up today. <laughs> Let's see. It reminds me of, uh, there's a phrase that writers use quite frequently called, I think it's the right phrase, writers out there. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But there's a phrase of kill your darlings. Yeah, does that make sense? I hope I'm getting that right. If not, it's something like that. And that has to do with falling in love with something. So we've been talking a lot today about creating ugly with intention, sort of leaning into discomfort to discover things about ourselves, to break through and uh, see other possibilities, other ways of creating and being in the world, learning things about ourselves. But the it's interesting how sometimes we, when we fall in love with something we've created, how that can also be quite difficult and quite constrictive, constricting. Okay, so I'm just gonna try and give the palest, palest of washes here. So when writers write something, a phrase that they really, really love, for example, a paragraph that they just love so much that they can't actually move forward from. <laughs> right? You Maybe you know it should go. It, you know you, like, there's something else that needs to happen, but you've created such a lovely thing. You don't want to let that go. That's, I think, what that phrase refers to, that sometimes we have to let go of what we think is the best thing, the best approach, the best product, the best turn of phrase, the best work of art to do something different, to actually create something of what? More better, more effective impact, something that feels fresher, more alive, beautiful and perfect isn't always 
what we want. That sometimes we need to break away from what we love and what we feel really good at and secure in to be able to get to that point. And it can feel super, super vulnerable. It can feel super, super scary sometimes. And it can feel so counterintuitive to not do the thing or not hold on to the thing that you feel is perfect. But again, it's another way we grow, another way we move forward. It's a fairly harsh phrase, but that's the one I've heard. Kill your darlings. And suddenly you can see other possibilities. I'm putting these watercolors through their paces today. All right. So this is like a very tranquil space that I've created right here for myself. I know it's, it might even be difficult to see on camera because it's so pale. But this to me is peace. This is calm. This is tranquility. This is breezy, easy wonderfulness. It's not exactly right either. It's not where I normally like to live. I like to have a little more color, a little more punch, a little more humanness in what I do, a little more life. But yes, oh, thank you. So Ashley also sees the calming in it. Yes, the wash. It is very calming. And I find it very calming to do as well. Another great thing. If you're having those days where you're feeling anxious or stressed, just, and if you're lucky enough to have watercolors or a piece of watercolor paper on hand, just to fill it with water and gently add in color layer by layer, you can take it as dark or vibrant as you want it to be. But this process of just letting it happen, letting it wash across the page, something I find super, super calming. And again, it's, it is exactly what it needs to be, even though I want to add more. It, feel, it would feel right if I was doing something here. So even, yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of the uh, intentional ugliness in this too. I'm going to let it be, even though part of me wants to go in and touch up those colors. I'm going to sit it aside. But later on, once it's dry, and maybe I can, maybe this is dry enough here to cut little windows into this. And maybe it'll become a, a double layered piece. And you know what, maybe I might even use this backing paper in an art journaling kind of way. Maybe what I'll write in the windows, I'll write, yeah, maybe I'll write in the windows. So let me put this aside on this page to let dry. And I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to cut this out just because there is still, like, still a few wet spots there. I'm going to cut some windows into this. So just a heads up. There we go. Little peekaboo doors. Kind of reminds me of an advent calendar with chocolates in it. <laughs> and Barb says, when you have to remove a character or sentence or part of a story that you have worked hard on for the sake of the overall story. So that is part of where that comes from, that kill your darlings, yes. So it's recognizing that even though that one piece, oh, that one part, that one aspect might be perfect, does it serve the rest of the story? Does it feel like it's a part of the story you want to tell in the end? Now, on that note, there's nothing saying that you can't hold on to that. That's why it's so great to have a sketchbook. Like that's what essentially what a sketchbook is, isn't it? Or a journal. All those lovely little bits and pieces, those ideas, those sparks, those in places of inspiration, you can hold on to them. And you never know when they might become useful in another project. You still might end up changing them, adjusting them, adapting them. But the thing that couldn't stay, there's no reason why it can't find a home in another project. Again, that idea, that theme of repurposing. 
I suppose all artists, all creatives, are really good at repurposing. <laughs> we want to be. And Olivia says, yes, that's exactly what I was thinking, Olivia. You called it, saying you cut them as flaps, like little doors. And that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, like little guys like that. I've been reading a few books about pop-up art. So perhaps this is being influenced by that too. I like the idea of creating imprecise pop-up art. There we go. Come, come. And it is nice to say, I know not everyone has watercolor paper, but I do love the sturdiness of watercolor paper. There we go. Interesting. Oh, hello, Carlos. Carlos says, oh, this is looking awesome. Love the colors there. It's like an idea forming in the bottom right and spreading out and creating as it goes. Love it. And <laughs> Carlos, it's okay. Apologizing for anyone out there who might be tuning in midway or through the live stream. That's okay. You're allowed to do that. You have exciting, vibrant, interesting lives. And you got to do that. You got to do your own life. So never, never a need to apologize. But yes, interesting, huh? This is this is interesting, and I love that your what you're seeing in it is uh, what something that I haven't had a chance to see in it yet. Again, that idea of perspective when we're just so close to something that we're working on, how sometimes it's impossible to be able to see all the potential, all the good stuff that's there. Right? We need to step back and have a little distance to be able to see it with fresh eyes, to shift gears in our brains. And Ashley says, I can picture you gluing that piece of paper down with the doors that open that show the opposite of the ugly, but the beauty inside of you. Oh, ho, ho, Ashley, I think that is a beautiful project. If folks want that assignment, and you know, I think both parts are beautiful, right? The ugly is beautiful in its own way, as we're discovering. It's different, and sometimes it may not be what we want, but it is there. So if I bring... It's an important part because I think I love both of them. So let's see. So let's see if I can just fold this up so I get an idea of what it might be. Yeah, so I might glue this down first, but just to give an idea. So that could be a little window. Right? And the contrast is really, really interesting. Oh, folks, this is a fun project. I invite you to consider creating one of these yourself. And it is always a lovely thing, and this is kind of an art therapist you thing, but that inside out, the use of those opposites, right? The over and under, what we show to the world, what we keep inside, uh, perhaps what we want to be and what we feel we really are, or there's so many ways you can look at that, you know, the two sides of the coin, and perhaps, you know what? The three sides, four sides, five sides. There's so many, we're such complex beings. There are so many, there's so many interesting ways of exploring who we are and why we are through the work we create. But yeah, so I'm, uh, oops, hee hee hee. I want to let that dry. I don't want to futz with it too much anymore. But that's the idea. So we'll have a little window. Let's see if I can do a little close up on this. See what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, maybe I, could, maybe I should put chocolates behind these. <laughs> I don't know why, but that gives me a lot of joy. This gives me a lot of joy. And Barb, oh, Barb has to go. Time to walk the dog. Thank you all for a lovely afternoon, says Barb. And thank you for being here and sharing, as always, your beauty, your wisdom, your thoughts, your creativity. And thank you for taking the journey with me, everyone. This has been a really like, interesting space, an interesting conversation. I, um, just about 
what does ugly mean? What do we mean when we talk about ugly? Can it be a value to us? Can it be something that is special and rewarding? If we actually do take some time to invest in it, acknowledge it, explore it, right? And chocolate is beautiful. Olivia, I agree with you. I think there's always room for chocolate. So I think, yeah, it's worth my time to take a little extra time later on after the live stream to revisit each one of these windows and what these colors mean, what, how they link to who I am, what I'm feeling right now, what I'm going through, maybe what I'm afraid of acknowledging or embracing, because it is difficult sometimes to embrace that ugly. But how else will we get to know it? How else will we get to know if it is in fact ugly or something a little more beautiful than that? Maybe it's just misunderstood. Sometimes ugly is just misunderstood. And sometimes ugly becomes something that is loved by being brought out into the light and honored. Yeah. Because with you folks here, you've been able to recognize some beauty in this piece that I've been making. And that helps me love it a little bit more. So thank you. <laughs> now what to go behind these windows? That is the question. Can I glue it down? It's a little dim, but you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to see. I'm going to give it a pre preliminary glue. I'll write you. I'll blot you. And yes, I'm talking to the art. Boop. That's the sound effect I make when I'm squishing down my art. Ha ha! Excellent. You know what? I'm going to let that happen. And so I'll probably, I mean, this might come apart just using a glue stick. It's watercolor paper, so I might want to go in with the, a more substantial paper glue, which I think I have around. But just for the sake of seeing what it looks like from giving it a go, giving it a dry run or a test drive. Let's see what happens. All right. Boop, 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 boop. All right. And this idea would actually make quite a lovely card for someone too, I think. A lovely little peekaboo window card. And then you can always trim it down later on. <laughs> yep, that brings me joy. So you can see there's so much you can do with something like this. And if I hadn't jumped in and just taken the journey with this piece to see where it was going to challenge myself and move against those feelings of what felt, what I thought I should do and actually try and go for the things that, that I shouldn't do or I wouldn't do normally, I wouldn't have discovered this. So I'm super happy about that. I, was, I feel like I've created something that really means something to me and something that I can grow with throughout the day. Hello, Teresa, welcome. And you know what I will do just before we wrap up here? Behind one of these windows, maybe this one here, because it's in the center, I will do the thing I always do and the symbol that I always go to. I'm going to create, I'm going to draw out a little heart. Each one of us has symbols that we turn back to time and time again. And for me, that circle and heart are two big themes. And even with this. And I'll leave it there for now. And I'll come back and revisit it later on. Boop. Yeah, I really enjoy this. <laughs> As if you couldn't tell, folks. <laughs> Everyone, 
What a pleasure it has been chatting with you today and creating art with you today. I'm so, so, so grateful that you've been able to drop by and spend some time with me. And that is including all the folks who are watching or listening who maybe haven't participated in the chat. That's okay. To everyone who's come a little late or dropped in and out, back and forth as they need to, all of that is okay. I'll be here. And I will be here again next Wednesday from 2 to 3.30, creating more art and maybe paying some attention to some of those uncomfortable edges within myself, seeing how I can use them to move even further forward and discover new things, new ways of creating and expressing myself. And with your help, I think that should be pretty easy. You folks are great companions to create with, so thank you. And again, if folks are out there and you're interested in uh, again, suggesting more creative ways of working, thinking, uh, perhaps you have Skillshare ideas, perhaps you want to participate in a Skillshare or a live stream that we do, let me know. And if I've sent out the signals before and said, hey, I want to do a live stream with you and I've forgotten to follow up, feel free to harass me. Consent to harass because sometimes I need that extra nudge. Goodness knows there are folks listening or watching and they know <laughs> sometimes you got to be patient with Mary. It takes me a while to wrap my head around things and respond to all the wonderful people who are out there. Oh, yes. Excellent. So there are messages. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Some people following up right now in the chat. Thank you for the reminder, Teresa. Everyone, this is a long weekend we're heading into in Canada. I hope you spend find some way to relax, refuel, enjoy yourself, do what you need to do to feel good to feel loved, to feel cared for, that you take some time to do some of those things for yourself, to perhaps not explore necessarily, but to honor the more difficult aspects of yourself that are sometimes hard to embrace in everyday life. You're just a, a human. We're all just humans doing the best that we can to grow forward and enjoy the time that we have here. So thank you so much for taking a bit of that journey with me today. And of course, until we get to create and connect with one another again in person, I'm looking forward to creating and connecting with you right here online. It looks like tomorrow night, Thursday night, or we will have another live stream at 7 p.m. And we will be welcoming Cree Carly to create with everyone. Folks, if you haven't met Cree before, they are uh, awesome. So prepare for a blast of loveliness with Cree. But for now, I think I'm going to take off myself and I'm going to take my dog for a walk and enjoy some of this warm summer air that we're having out there right now. Thank you so much for being who you are and for hanging in there and honoring yourselves. Take care, stay safe, and see you again soon. Bye, folks.